International Women's Day as well. Yeah. Happy Monday, every Monday. Myself, Camille, with Steve and Caboose and Malik break down the latest in the gaming world. And uh, I'm so happy that we're able to do this on International Women's Day. So yeah. happy yeah. International Women's Day to everybody. Happy International there. Women's happy Day to you, Camille. Oh, yes. thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Now this is the this is the moment you tell me well how great I am. Come on, Chris. Come on. Oh, you're awesome. You're awesome. Uh, Camille, you're so great. And 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 I and I guess I guess Death Stranding is an okay game. I guess yes. only for today, <laughs> right? It's gonna be a, a clip it, no clip it to hold Death it against him forever. Episode. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, I tried. I tried. I tried. Um, I I hope all of you are having a, having a really great uh, Monday. Today we're going to be talking about. <laughs> oh, there's there's some people in the chat loving Kaboom. Oh, <laughs> um, Raj, thank you so much. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about Valheim breaking five million users. Wow, uh, Call Crazy. of Duty Warzone, the one year anniversary and milestones. I can't believe it's only been a year, a year it's crazy. of Warzone. Yeah. Uh, then we have some Marvel Avengers news, as well as the rumors of a Nintendo Switch Pro. We've been there and we're going to talk about it again. <laughs> All right, uh, <laughs> now that you know our topics, let your thoughts run in chat on social media. Be sure to tag us if there's any uh, interesting clippable moments that you want to continue to contribute uh, to the conversation on socials, you could take us at Squad State. All right, let's get started. Uh, Malik, last week you kind of checked out before we <sighs> actually hit this topic. <laughs> Good um, old American internet. <laughs> Good old yeah, American it. internet. <laughs> uh, but now we have it here. So let's talk about Valheim. Yes. Okay. So me and my friend, the, the only way to like accurately describe Valheim is a streamlined strategy game. It is just minimalistic. Uh, and it's it's really hard because a lot of people compare it to like Ark on a Minecraft level. You are basically a Viking. You end up uh, kind of in purgatory and you have to go kill these five bosses in order to ascend to Valhalla. Um, and it sounds like a, a simple quest, but it's absolutely not. You start off collecting like wood and stones and flint off the ground. You make very basic tools. Um, you know, it's your basic, you know, collection, build, survive. Uh, but what's nice about it is, one, it has very low requirements. The game is half a gigs. Two, there's a huge mod support community. Um, so there's, like, lots of quality of life mods. Um, there's just a whole bunch of stuff out there. And then the Reddit is just absolutely thriving. And this game really takes a lot of the tedious and kind of ridiculous stuff in survival games that we don't really like and kind of makes it easy. It's one of these games where you can hang out with your friends, but it's also super challenging. There's mm. something for everyone if you really want to um i know that i played with a couple of squad guys and one of our friends went out on a boat and lost everything while i was sitting happily at our base building um and it's it's great because like the food mechanic uh your stamina and your health um are all tied together you don't have to worry about managing these little things if you eat food you get stamina and you get health it's as simple as that um and you start out with like just eating normal food and you can get potions um have you guys checked out valheim i know i'm like rambling on but this game is just like super complex i've heard a lot about valheim uh <laughs> and it sounds really fun it sounds super interesting just uh not necessarily like a game that's up my alley but a game that everyone i know has been playing and recommending to me <laughs> like crazy so i think at some point i'm gonna have to try it especially now hearing it's hit a number as big as five million but i think like yeah. it, as a general note it's so interesting to see you know it, it, in a sea of your marvel's avengers or your cyberpunks or assassin's creed you have games like among us or fall guys mm -hmm. or valheim being the ones that come out on top you know games yeah. or, or even like you know a lot of people were jumping into rust for a little bit they were getting back into yeah. that you know seeing yeah. some yeah. some steam being picked up for that too you see these like smaller games that are very niche but have like a specific objective or just something that is super catchy and that makes you want to keep coming back to play and that's what people are looking for nowadays and valheim seems to really fit the bill 
Yeah, and yeah. the common theme with all those too is they there's a big emphasis on community and friends and like right. cooperation. Mm. And especially yeah. at a time like now with the pandemic, I think that's what really attracts people. And also all those games are accessible, you know, yeah. low mm-hmm. graphical requirements. It's but Camille, what were you gonna say? Sorry. No, no, no. Uh, keep going. Uh, it is accessible. Uh, yeah. But so players have played uh ten thousand years in time in playtime. Um, <laughs> that's it. To play that much, sit, sit in front of a computer and play. Uh, but I yeah. think you're absolutely right. It's accessible. I feel like that's why it's so successful. Um, we're so used, especially me being a console gamer, and I have not tried Valheim. Um, I guess also tying into the stereotype that I'm a console gamer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but I think the fact that you know. I'm usually used to these AAA titles that really get my attention and like some indie ones that like uh, I'm familiar with either the studio or their previous work. So then I want to try out, right. Or they're available right. like on um, game pass or, you know, something that I could just boot up and I don't have to pay any extra money uh, to right. give it a try. Right. Um, so I think because I'm used to that, it's really fascinating this whole time being in the pandemic because you're hearing of all these indies just like popping up and just dominating uh, the gaming world, especially on Twitch. And I think that's just so fascinating because then it shows just to be like a widely successful game, you don't have to have the marketing dollars. We've seen marketing go really bad with cyberpunk, right? Um, Mm -hmm. We see now how a community, and we've known this, right? But we're seeing more examples of how a community could really make a game successful um, for the long term. Like people are still playing Among Us. How long has it been, right? (laughs) Um, You know, so so that I think is gonna be a real, hopefully, uh, uh, attention. Uh, or like a, a factor that studios will be able to acknowledge and maybe put some time into smaller projects as well in between yeah. mm-hmm. um, or like hire devs to work on smaller projects in between like their bigger AAA titles. Yeah. Agreed. And I think also to your point is Valheim is in this great spot where it's in early access. They Mm -hmm. are seeing this huge success. They've said that they're going to stay humble and just keep working on the game. I have a very strong belief that when this game releases or even before it officially releases, it's going to get picked up by somebody, maybe Mm. by like Microsoft. They put it on Xbox Game Pass free and they just keep supporting that studio. And then it's on Xbox, you know, because Xbox can afford to have a team just transfer that game over to console. It, It wouldn't be that hard because it is such a simple title and it has low hardware requirements. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think it's incredible to to look up the studio because the iron gate studio this game was made by five people mm-hmm. and to see yeah, like I see, I see that in chat too yeah holy incredible smoke. amount of success i think it's so funny that like last week unfortunately <laughs> like you you dropped out of the call but but you you came to the show to propose a, a topic of like you know it reached the four million player milestone and now yeah. a week later a week we're later. at five this this game first came in, into my, like my peripherals when I think it was like a, in between like one or two million. I was like, okay, this game seems to have some legs. Like it's growing on Steam. It, a lot of content creators are now back in this game, like playing it online and everything. I was like, okay, maybe I'll get around to it. But it just seems like such a rapid growth that you just don't see. And yeah. going to, to Camille, when she was saying like, you never see this with AAA games. It's either it's a rapid success right out of the gate or... It's it not. Dies. It's a, it's a failure. Yeah, and it dies. I I'm so curious to see what happens with this game over time, mm. like how it evolves. Because when did it yeah. release in early access on the second of February? We're yeah. just over a month. Yeah, like and that's wild. Yeah, and I, I'm just gonna add to that because I think we have to start looking at, you know. I and because because I'm a casual gamer, right? I'm thinking of like, okay, a game <laughs> releases, it's either successful off the gate or it's qualified to be a failure. Where I think that you know the gaming community has kind of we kind of pigeonholed ourselves to mm. games that could be great, right? You look at yeah. Among Us, and yes, it was successful on release, but then years from then, it's still successful although it didn't have um, the huge community following it throughout. Um, 
So this, again, I know we talked about this last week and weeks before. This, again, gives more argument to why we shouldn't just necessarily, um, you know, expect developers and publishers to put out, you know, a game and have it like play it once or like play through a few hours of it and be like, okay, this is crap. Right. I yeah, don't care need- if they update it later on. I, I don't, I don't want any of that. Right. Um, of mm-hmm. course we want clear communications from, you know, the publishers on what their game will be on release, but hopefully this kind of success that we're seeing with these indie titles will really um, make a point for publishers to start being more transparent and saying, look, we're looking to develop, like in the case of Cyberpunk, <laughs> we're looking to develop um, this game. Yes, it is going to be delayed, which Cyberpunk did. Yeah. Okay, on delay, um, you know, on release, it, it is a bit buggy. We're still mm-hmm. working on the core game. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I feel like with indies, their developers are so good at communicating with their community. And, and Absolutely. this is something that AAAs can really learn uh, from. Yeah. So you're so right. And and one thing that I wanted to like mention that is super it, it's really clear and indicative of what you say is when you load up into Valheim, the patch notes are on the right hand corner. They tell you exactly what they are working on and when it got changed, right when you load up into the game. And I mean, for some people they may, you know, not want that because it's not a clean UI. Um, but I think it's really cool that they're trying to communicate with people. And also the second big point that I had with Valheim is so there is a streamer. He primarily does Escape from Tarkov and some other variety games called Clean. Um, mm-hmm. And he got somebody to make a 50-slot server for him. And what he's doing is allowing people to come in and pick up roles and start exploring like this generated world mm-hmm. and set up like their own little towns, their own little structures, kind of create these stories and make an RPG within just a dedicated server within Valheim. And Mm -hmm. that is so crazy that a game that is still being worked on, still early access, has the potential to be an in-depth RPG for people, you know, to kind of expand like that. Now, the average Joe can only really get a 10-person server. Um, That's all you can really rent right now that's stable. He has somebody specially working on that. But to see community support like that, to see people already putting in effort to kind of take that game to the next level, I think will carry it. And like Camille, like you said, we need community and developers that are willing to put in the time and effort to make games last and maintain that quality and kind of always be pushing for new experiences within itself. Yeah. Have have they started outlining what future content looks like for this game? Yes. So we're still waiting on one of the regions. I think it's called the the Mist Vale. Uh, it's it's we're waiting on a new region. Um, and that's going to have another Forsaken uh in it, which is the raid bosses. Um, oh, cool. and then from there they've talked about how or biome, I guess they're called. Sorry. Um, and then from there they want to start working on different biomes and kind of increasing uh the way that the game were or perfecting the way that the game works because they just did a recent update where they increased the difficulty of some of the bosses because people were blasting through them too quick. There's also a lot of bugs and a lot of little quality of life things that they need to implement uh, like full fully um, like server options. We should be able to choose, you know, the experience gain, the item drops, the kind of how the things interact with the world. If you look at a game like Ark and the options that you have when building a server there or creating a world, um, I think that's the level that Valheim needs to get to because right now at its surface, it's a great game. It's a great pastime um, and it's really quality. So now they need to increase the scope of the game with a new biome and increase the quality as they do that so that way they don't outpace themselves with adding too much this right. is this is the tough thing though about these smaller games right because yeah. this, this is kind of yeah. what happened to fall guys this is pretty much exactly what happened to among us is they are they are these games that are very niche they get picked up by a large audience a lot of people get really into them and then they want more content but because the dev teams are so small, they can only get content out so quickly. So yeah. Fall Guys gets a new season out after a long while. And I think Fall Guys is still like in an okay spot and enough people are still playing it. I mean, they, they just got bought out by Epic, by Epic right? Yeah. yeah. 
So like they're still in an okay spot. But then you look at a situation like Among Us. I think Among Us is in a pretty bad spot because people still play it every now and then. Um, and it's still a lot of fun to come back to, no doubt. But like they promised a new map early 2021 and haven't provided one single update on it. Like the only update people got were glitching into the map through the Nintendo <laughs> Switch version of the game. You know, like that's all everyone got in terms of that. So like it can be a scary situation for a game like Valheim to be growing as much as it is just kind of out of the blue because then the pressure is on for them to get new content out there yeah. and to start adding some more stuff for people to want to continue to play for and, months or potentially years on end. And yeah. to market it, right? I know yeah. um, we brought it up before. I think Malik, you brought it up how like they could potentially be picked up by say Microsoft and be on Game Pass. But I would ask the question, do we prefer studios that are kind of in this spot, like indie studios that are in this spot, um, like Iron Gate, to be picked up by a big publisher right um or to be bought out like fall guy i think it all comes down to like what that company can provide if it's a like if we're taking a look at valheim if it's a matter of upscaling and expanding the studio to provide more support and get it out of early access and you know fulfill promises made to the company then yeah i think that an acquisition like um like a fall guides to epic it is advantageous for a studio but if it's just a, a bid for more money i don't know if that's the best case to go because then you can just lose your your luster if you will of being like this indie darling right mm -hmm. i i feel like if there's a studio that is going to be acquired right um like okay say for example this fallout fall guys Fall, fallout i don't know fallout why guys. i went there fallout guys <laughs> fall boys in there <laughs> um no but like so with fall guys right epic is one of those companies i would be weary about if mm. they're bought out because i feel like they would try to make fall guys into fortnite you get what i'm saying they have a bigger, mm. they, they have a really good sense of what works and that works great um with fortnite do you want every game on their roster to be like Fortnite? Like I know they bought out Rocket League as well, right? Um, and they're kind of, you know, I know Psyonix is very like touchy because they have a really niche uh, esports um, community, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. But again, I, I hesitate that they they start doing concerts <laughs> in Rocket League. Um, you know, so so that makes me nervous. Now, when I think of a great partnership, I think of Cuphead. Mm. You know, I think of Studio MD yeah. HR. Yeah. I think that was a really great partnership that continues to flourish. Sure. And even in that instance, right? Like you still see the case of there's delays, right? You still see the case that Studio MD HR, there's still a smaller team. Yes, they got money um, from Microsoft. And, but I think because the studio values so much, um, you know, Cuphead and remaining authentic to what Cuphead is supposed to be, yeah. they, they're they trying to keep their development team smaller. Um, so we're seeing delays. I'm still, I'm still waiting. <laughs> I'm still waiting for more Cuphead. You, and you see other <laughs> opportunities like the TV show, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's like a good example of how a partnership could work. And I mm -hmm. feel like, you know, when companies like indie studios are looking to be partnered um, with some of these bigger companies, they have to take that into consideration because that can make you lose a lot of your fan base. And I, I, I think that specifically with Valheim, but then also kind of Xbox is they have an opportunity to do what Sony and PlayStation did at the beginning of the PlayStation three era and just, have this big push of indie games just mm -hmm. support all these indie games at once get people's attention on them if three out of the ten succeed that's that's great you had three studios that were able to get their game out there and i think xbox game pass is slowly starting to become this void where some games get lost mm -hmm. but you can still have some indie titles on there that are true to themselves like you there's such a variety on Game Pass, and I get what you mean with Epic. There are some 
organizations that they should be careful of. Yeah. But I think someone like Xbox or Steam um, could really help them stay true to their own identity and kind of grow. But at the same time, do they really need the marketing or would it be better for them to just keep their nose in the ground, do the No Man's Sky route, keep developing their game, not worry about what other people are saying or doing and just kind of succeed on their own? I mean, they have success that a lot of studios only dream about. And I don't think that they've done much for marketing, to be honest. No. I think that they just let the community and the streamers do all the marketing for them. And yeah. it seems to be working out. <laughs> I think it also depends on what they see for the future of the studio, right? Mm -hmm. If um, this studio is looking just to do Valheim and looking for it to be a long servicing game, yeah. a partnership may make sense. Um, maybe not now, but then in a few Eventually. Exactly, yeah. right? Where they get the the um, community in a place. But then at that time, you could also risk losing that hype, right? You, losing that attention that other companies may have in your company right now because you have 5 million plus uh, users, right? Yeah. Um, so I, it's a tricky one. There's so much that goes into making this decision. I'm so happy I'm not in a position where I would have to make a decision. A we're just sitting here enjoying the game. Yeah, yeah we're <laughs> game, but, but, but it's a tough one. I don't think there's a clear black and white, you know, this is right, this is wrong. It just depends on like the title, the studio, what they see in their next like five years, that five year plan, um, and also their community. Because there are some communities that are very protective over their brand and like, you know, us gamers were great, but then we could also be really toxic sometimes. We could be like, oh my God, they sold it to, you know, Epic or whatever, this is horrible and not mm -hmm. even give it a chance. Um, which, you know, I feel like any gamer out there that truly loves a game and the development team and publisher has been great with communicating any updates with you, you if they ever make um, a chance or a decision to partner with a company, just give them the benefit of the doubt, give them some time to show that it's the right partnership. And if it's not right for you, then it's not right for you. Yeah. Yeah. And look. If if anyone from Iron Gate is watching this, stay as far away from EA as possible, please, please. I love this game, but just don't don't go anywhere near EA. Let's keep it alive. <laughs>